Hey everybody! If you've been watching the channel for a while, I'm sure you're an expert crabber by now. So you've gone out and you got yourself a mess of crab, got your fill of cracked crab, and made a big old batch of crab rangoon. But you've still got crab meat and wonton wrappers left over. Well, I've got you covered. I'm making this delicious and decadent white crab lasagna that everyone's gonna love. So let's get started. Let's start by making the sauce, and if you want to use the kind in the jar, go right ahead and do it. But making this stuff from scratch is really easy, and it is going to blow this clean out of the jar. So I'm going to start with one cup of heavy cream. I've got four tablespoons of butter, two cloves of garlic, and that's going to make this pretty garlicky. So if you don't like it that garlicky, you can cut that down to one clove, or you can take it to ten cloves if you like. I've got a tiny bit of nutmeg, and then I'm gonna use as much cheese as it takes to give that a nice flavor and thicken it up a little bit. And you could use Parmesan, Asiago, Romano, or a combination of those, but use the cheese that fits your budget. You can even use that cheese with the green top, but that can clump up on you a little bit, so you might have to whisk that a little harder if that's the way you go. So I'm gonna start by melting that butter and warming up this garlic nice and gently in it to extract a whole bunch of flavor. I'll keep that pretty low so I don't burn this garlic. I just want to warm it up and really extract a ton of garlic flavor from there because I kind of like garlic a lot. Now once that butter is all melted and it starts to foam and sizzle, just give that garlic a minute or so to soften up. But you don't really want to brown it because it can go kind of bitter on you. There we go. It's kind of starting to get pretty clear now. Got tons of garlic aroma in the air. We're just about ready to put that cream in there. There we go. Drop that cream in there. I can actually bump that temp up a little bit to medium. Bring this up to temp. I'm going to give that just a little pinch of salt. Because that cheese is going to add a lot of salt too. And then I'll go ahead and grate in the nutmeg. If you're not using fresh nutmeg, you're probably going to put in just maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. If that, it's a really, really small amount. And if you are using fresh nutmeg, it's just a very small sprinkle in there. Just going to kind of warm up that flavor a little bit. You want to keep that cream moving so it doesn't scald. And now, when it comes up to temp and starts to boil a little bit, I'll cut that heat down to just keep it simmering. So I won't be able to stir while I'm adding in the cheese. Of course, you could grate it ahead of time, but I just grate it right into the pan. And this is going to take at least a half cup of cheese, but probably even more than that. It's not one that I really measure out when I'm making it. I just kind of eyeball it and taste it. So I'll grate in some cheese, stir it up and get that to melt. Then I'll add some more. And so on and so forth until this gets nice and cheesy and thickens up enough to really coat a spoon nicely. Oh yeah, that is starting to look just right. 
I'm right about the cheesiness level I want to be. Oh yeah, look at that spoon coatiness. Perfect. Oh, and it tastes great too, so. There in 10 minutes or less, you got a killer Alfredo. That will just blow away anything that comes in a jar. Okay, so we'll set that aside, let that cool down a bit, and get everything else ready. Now let's make the cheese filling, and I'm gonna start with one half cup of ricotta cheese. I got one half cup of grated mozzarella. That's gonna take a pinch of salt and some pepper. And I'm also going to add some fresh basil. This is a really, really rich dish, so you want to add in something that's going to give it a little fresh pop to kind of cut down on that richness. And the basil works perfectly for that, and it tastes delicious too. I'll just roll those leaves up. Slice them one time down the middle. Then we'll just give those a little shift. I'll add in whatever five basil leaves is. I'll stir this together really well. Then we give that a little taste. Check for seasoning. Ah, it's just right. Now, I'll add in one egg, and this is going to give it a little fluffiness when it cooks. And again, stir that together really well. If you're doubling this recipe and using a cup of that ricotta, one egg will still do the trick. You just can't buy a half an egg. Now let's put together our little lasagnas. And if you want to do a full-size lasagna like this, and you don't want to use the wonton wrappers, I would recommend using the really thin oven-ready lasagna noodles or fresh lasagna noodles if you can get them. The big wavy kinds, I think, are going to be a little too heavy for this dish, but if you want to use them, go right ahead. So, for our little ones, we're going to start by just putting a little of that Alfredo down in the bottom. Just kind of keep these from getting too crunchy down there. And we'll drop in two of the wonton wrappers. They're very thin, so I go ahead and use two. Oh, now look at that beautiful crab meat. <laughs> So, I will put in a layer of the crab meat. Doesn't have to be real thick or packed in there because it's very rich. Oh, just like so. And then, I'll just put in a little bit of the Alfredo on there. It's not too much, spread it around. It's just a couple of teaspoons in this little guy here. Now I'm actually going to add a little pinch of some mozzarella on there. I'll come in, put two more of my wonton wrappers. And this one, I'm going to lay the ricotta on there. Some more crab. A little bit more cheese. And looks like in this ramekin I can get one more layer of those wonton wrappers on. We're gonna hit that with the Alfredo. I'm gonna push it. I'm gonna push it and make another layer. Mm. Just keep it kind of thin. 
a little bit of crab on there. Ooh. Oh man. Now on this final wonton wrap. Wait a minute. Come on. A little cheese in there too. <laughs> One last wonton wrapper. That is, I mean, it's a double layer. Alright, kind of tuck those corners down in there. Spread that alfredo around. Get down on the edges. And we're gonna top that with a big pinch of that mozzarella. You can tell this is gonna be incredibly rich. Now you can mix up those layers in any order or any way you like. You see I've got plenty more stuff here. Probably enough to do four of these little ramekins in this recipe. And now I'm going to pop this into that 375 degree oven for 35 minutes. But I don't want that cheese to get too browned, so I'm going to tent a piece of foil over it. And by tenting I mean I'm going to kind of puff it up over the top. It doesn't have to even be sealed. But I don't want it resting right on that cheese or when I take it off it's just going to pull all the cheese with it. And that's going to be a fail. And what I like to do is to cook this for about 20 minutes with the foil tent on there, then pop that off and let that cheese kind of brown up for the last 15 minutes or so. That way I don't get one solid leathery piece of cheese up there that pops off as soon as I cut into this. But if that's the way you like yours, go ahead and cook it without the foil. Or leave the foil on the whole time if you just want it really, really super melty. It's your cheese top, so you do it however you like. I will put this on this baking sheet before I put it in the oven because this can get a little messy. Now let's see how we did. And normally I would just dig into here with my fork and go to town, but I'm gonna try to cut a little piece out so we can see what it looks like inside. So let's take a look. Oh my. Check out that bite. <laughs> That's a big one. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. Oh. That is something else. Who is, of course, really, really rich. Man, you'd have to pay a good bit of coin to get something like that in a restaurant. It's super decadent, super tasty. Man. That is, that is a dish of gout right there. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Fantastic. I honestly hope you can go out, get yourself a mess of crab and try this one out because this is definitely a dish to remember. Thanks for watching. <laughs>